it's six o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Is that a pledge? Commission. Thank you. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Lord, we come to you tonight thanking you for all the many blessings that you have given us. We ask that you watch over this city, watch over us as the commissioners of this city. Let us make decisions that further help our community, but also further glorify your name. We ask you to be with us as we go through this meeting. Watch over us, God lead and direct us. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Everybody out tonight. Go ahead and get started. The first item of business is the approval of minutes. Approved minutes. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Clever saying bye bye. Uh, oh, second. Good afternoon. Next is the bills. Make a motion we approve the bills. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Those in favor say by the aye. Uh, aye. Same. First item under old business is hire a sanitation driver position. We move that to closed session. Next item is discuss the proposed aquiline agreement. Maybe ask for those of you. Um, tell me what you need to know about. <laughs> Well, last time you had some questions about the way it was worded. Well, and I still do. Um, the somebody needs to explain um, the average restaurant in uh, Beaver Dam. Do they agree in advance to be a part of the program? They have to opt out. They're, they're automatically put in and they can opt out of it. And that was five five years ago. So it's, um, it, anybody that puts up and comes in sample water, that's what explained to them. To you, if this is part of the bill, unless you tell me you don't want it. And right, right. Well, they have to call off the line. Okay. Well, that, that's what it says. There's nothing positive in the agreement that requires anybody <coughs> to, 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 to acknowledge and accept the service. It is, it appears that, at least from the agreement, that there is some type of uh, separate agreement with the city of Beaver Dam, so which there actually was not. This is it. This is what y'all provided me is, is it, correct? Yep. Um, the other provision that I've got issue with, I've got some question about, is the indemnification portion of the agreement, um, which basically says that, that uh, if, in fact, uh, there's some type of third-party liability from, from a resident, that Aqualine will indemnify and save the city harmless. I don't have a problem with that, but by what mechanism do they save and hold the city harmless? Do they carry some form of separate liability insurance that they um, uh, protect the city through? Uh, do they provide any type of uh, financial information that they have adequate assets to, to protect the city? Now, I understand that the average claim out here is subject to being $1,500, but I'm aware, and I assume it's, it's, we've had other instances in which something has happened to the water line or a sewer line or something in which there's potential for fairly significant property damage to, to someone's home or other property. And so as long as the city's comfortable that there is a, a mechanism by which they can be indemnified if, in fact, there's damages of ten, fifteen, or twenty thousand dollars to somebody's property. As a result, I assume what we're doing here, if it's the result of the failure of Aqualine to timely respond, or to properly respond, is that what what uh, indemnification would be for? If somebody's injured because they either didn't respond, didn't respond timely, or they were careless in the way that they responded. And it 
as long as the city, it's it, as long as this language is art with the city, that's fine. But but there's nothing in there that is specific. By example, other indemnification provisions that I routinely see requires that there be some type of uh, liability insurance in which even if the party's unable to indemnify, in this case the city, they have separate coverage that will indemnify the city. So the city's got somebody else to look to. Um, again, if what we're talking about here is minimum claims, there probably never will be a, a problem. There may not be one anyway. But if you get a large claim of 15, 20, 25 thousand dollars, and you have litigation in which the city has got to defend itself, um, who pays for that? Is that do you might understand that indemnification would also include court costs, attorney fees, and those type of things if the city had responsibility? Is that there was a claim that the city was responsible? Is that not what that phrase "hold harmless" the city be? Yes, yes, and I could say that I'm going to hold Kevin <laughs> da Davis harmless, but I know well, you I don't back it up. Yeah, yeah, you, you got you, and and the, the point here is that that all 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 you have is an agreement with with this entity, and I'm not saying anything bad about them one way or the other. What I am saying is that without any type of liability insurance. Um, the potential for the city from a, from a damaged customer is number one that that they look past uh, Aqualine to the city for to pay the damage. And number two, we get drug into uh, litigation in which there's significant costs and attorney fees, and this agreement doesn't extend to a point that the city's protected. I can tell you. Unless, unless you've got absolute confidence <coughs> in the assets uh, of this entity, which you may have, but there's nothing in the agreement unless there's something else. So when we hire somebody to work for the city, say a subcontractor, do they have to have liability insurance? And wouldn't that be the same thing for this? Shouldn't they have liability insurance? Well, they're not technically working for the city. They're still responsible for city property and city damages. No. Because the, the provision of plumbing states that we cannot go anything past the water meter, and the insurance is from the water meter to the house, so it's, it's not. So our once city. it once it gets past the water meter going to the house, it's not our responsibility. Yeah, that's right. But the fact that we're collecting money for these people and everything that throw us in the we put us in with everything. You asking me? No. Um, I'm glad Larry cleared that up. Uh, I, you're saying that from the meter to the house Correct. is uh, is the homeowner's responsible. That's, that's, right. that's what the insurance is based upon. So we're not talking about any potential damage exterior to the meter to the individual resident or well, our piece of our yeah. We're not saying there's not going to be some damage to the residents, but it would be because of their line. Yeah, yeah. Cause damage, nothing from yeah, our line. My, my, cause my question is nothing has changed with regard to the city's liability and responsibility for its lines up to the point of the individual residential meter. Correct. Correct. What is at issue is if something happens from the meter to the home. Is that correct? Right. For which the individual landowner has always been responsible. Correct. Okay. So if 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 a, if a water line breaks in my yard or in Keith's yard, and he doesn't forget aqua. It's Keith's responsibility to get somebody in there and dig it up and fix it. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Or to fix it. All right. Which I guess begs the question is what, why do we have something in there in which there is 
language in there that they will indemnify and save the city harmless. Why? Because basically what the city's doing, if I understand, all the city's doing, is saying that here is a group that will take care of that and they will do it for X number, uh, X, X dollars a month. And the city has an agreement with them that if you will agree for them to do it, we'll collect it. But out of your water bill, and they'll be responsible for fixing it, and the city gets 50 cents. I read this right. I think the main reason we did this when it all came about was because it also pays. Well, we've had, and we had just had one on Lewis Lane, a big loss, a water loss. This company pays for the water as well. So right now, the homeowner has to pay for the water. And we had just, it hadn't been too long with one on Lewis Lane. It was $2,200, wasn't it? Oh, I thought it was up more like three or 4000 Yeah, I, I was going to get to the lost water provision. Um, so they paid, for the, and the timing was kind of, when that happened, and it was kind of fresh on everybody's minds that, this would take care of the homeowner as far as a big water loss. The, the, and, and they got the time to repair it. So, so the benefit the benefit to the individual landowner is number one, it gets it for fairly minimum cost. Number two, it gets fairly prompt repair. And number three, if there's substantial loss of water, it can certainly be argued as part of the aquiline is responsible for, for, for the cost of the water. Yeah. They pay. I know they've got something there this time where they're questioning is paying for the sewer portion. And, and I can probably argue with them if the water is out of line, it's not going in the sewer. But we have no separate franchise agreement or anything. In other words, the only agreement that, that we have with, with them is this agreement right here. Is that correct? Yes. Is there a separate? Is there a separate agreement, or is, is there a separate order or ordinance that the city has passed that that directs itself to this is this is going to be city policy that there has to be an entity in this case such as Aqualine that will provide water repair services to individual residents. And, and what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that there, there is nothing in here that requires the average landowner out here to agree to anything. In other words, if he doesn't, if he doesn't, if he's not, if he doesn't opt out, he's in. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah. Is this, is this up for renew? I understand it's got a 30 day termination, but otherwise it just apparently continues. I don't it's, think it's up for renewal, it's just questions on that last issue that we were here last month. Uh, I would suggest that perhaps for the next meeting, Larry, I think you have some discussion about it. Perhaps okay. Well, and one of the things on here, one of the selling points when they presented this to the city was the fact that we would be reimbursed for the sewer charge on there, which was extra income to the city. Uh, that was their idea. They put that in here. And it was also extra cost to the city, too. Well, and, yeah. and we're considering letting them out of it and, and where they're not responsible for that. Well, I've got no problem with that, but if we're going to let them out of it, they might ought to lower their rates to the customers a little bit or something. Well, well I'm not even saying let them out of it. I'm just saying... I see where they where the <laughs> arguments at. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad we had this discussion because I do have a, having read the agreement for certain things I didn't understand. I clearly understand the benefit to the city, and I also understand the benefit to the individual property owner because if there's huge water loss, uh, the, the, the customer, the resident, is protected uh, from that loss. Uh, and sometimes, to be honest with you, when there's uh, less than precise language in the agreement, an old lawyer just gets a chill. I'm just saying, I don't know really how to word it. Word it. I, it's, not, it's not ideally worded, and if there's going to be any additional modification or amendment to it, I think we've got for us to talk about this briefly. 
make sure it's been well done for me. Next time we're going down into the new business is disposable wipes. Yes, we're having sort of having uh, quite a bit of problems with uh, the sanitary sewer lines. Uh, what we're finding is the baby wipes. Evidently, they are a popular thing for some mm -hmm. aid citizens. And uh, they are creating a lot of problems on the west side of town. And, uh, I think Mary has done some research on some, some mail outs and Facebook information for the mm -hmm. cities that have been using and putting out. Uh, Somewhat, they still have issues, and then if they can pinpoint the area, they'll try to just send a notice to those customer only. There's a certain problem area. You know, the baby wipes are not biodegradable, mm -hmm. and you know, if they catch on a, uh, a hammer tap, an old hammer tap, or a piece of root, whatever the line, you know, then it forms a block. You know, that's the good thing. The next thing you know, you get served back up to somebody's house. Or Bowling Green and Warren County both are advertising on the radio with Bowling Green that you do not flush your wipes down the toilet or put it in your safety system because of this same problem that they're having. That same thing. And they're advertising on the radio. Now the ones that state they're flushable, are they okay to flush? No, no. They're still not all of them flushable. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, some of them don't say that, but I wonder, people might be thinking because it says it's flushable right. that it is. Outside, outside of the mountain, they didn't know it's... Yeah. Just having a grandbaby that's just getting out of the The baby wipes tell you not to flush them. That, 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 that's too big. It's these others, more of our seniors, that personal care wipes right. instead of flush them. So you have to be specific to some people what you're saying. You say baby wipes, oh, that's not what I use. You have to be specific to what you're going to say. Because if some people want to stay... I would say, how do you probably be expanding on what about the just to clean it? Because I don't... We use those at our house. It pulls out of the top there's of the windows. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Or a And then there's a the windows. It's like flushing. a multi surface, too. Well, they're probably flushable. They're not flushable. Right? That's, that's true. That's what I'm saying. That's they what don't advertise. I've never right. looked at the box. We just don't want to see the dark. It's just something that kind of took a common sense to it. I don't know what the solution is on it. Whether it's a mass mail out or maybe the, 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 the parts of town that we know we're having problems with, maybe a, a handout to them or something, but we, we need to start moving. The parts of town you're having trouble with, is it because of part of the older system that has trouble with it, it is, roots? And uh, it, does. it is, but now that's also the majority of the lines that have been lined, too. So, uh, you know, second and Second Central to Goshen Road and Central to Ridgecrest is, you know, the, the problem right now. It's kind of where we're at. You can do a direct door mailing to them. They're fairly cheap. It's not. I mean, everybody that lives in the city get one. They did one last Friday for that guy that said so and so mm -hmm. is coming. Everybody freaked, freaked everybody out. out. We had phone call after phone call after phone call. I had people call and say, oh, we heard that this Christian singer is coming to the amphitheater. It's like, not. No, I, no, I know. I knew. Yeah. No, no. Apparently there's a singer that yeah. night. Yeah. But uh, like I said, if you could do something like that, you can maybe, and you're going to have, like I said, you pick out what part of the city it is, you may just do it at one part. I did the whole city and see where, then go back to the park and still have a problem. Okay. You might talk to Charlie to do a one call. Okay. That's a good idea. I mean, just good idea. another, well, the, the direct one item is fairly cheap and it covers the whole area. It really is. And you can, like I said, you can even just do it in the city of Beaver Dam. You don't have to do it outside the city. Yeah, we, we can put it on the water bill, but that just goes so far to my people. <coughs> but you yeah. can do direct door mailing to just the city, two city routes and part of the other routes, you can be perfect. And they can do that. How difficult would it be <coughs> to have it in Spanish also? I don't think it would be that. No, you, no, no, I know about yourself. Thing? You get your life. We got a translator. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a very good idea because that could very well be where some of the problems come from. I'm just not uh, understanding it. The, the, there's, and it might just be on all of them, it seems like the that heritage is, is a lot of fried food and grease down the drain. Is, is where the issue can be 
So that may not be something else, another good idea to put on there as well. Yeah. Next item is pouring and analyzer. Is that something more? Yeah, we need to put move it in a little bit. Okay. Employee resignation. Jonathan Morrow has been working for us for a little four years. Uh, he turned his letter of resignation Monday of last week, uh, stating that uh, his body was having difficulty driving the sanitation route. Uh, he was almost 50 years old. He thought it was time for him to move on. So. We do need a motion to second to accept. So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Favor say bye bye. Aye. All same. Motion passes. Next approve the Beaver and Build Supply construction invoice. Is it in here? I didn't know. No, we didn't get to it. Do you have a copy of it? Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's just a, we just pulled this out separate. We didn't last month, so I think we figured it out. Uh, $33,116. That's for work done in February. So we can make a motion to set the pay that. Make a motion to pay the um, invoice from the Brand Building. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, signify by the aye. Uh, same motion passes. Uh, next item is to approve a resolution recognizing Harvard value, which is in your packet uh, April 27th. This is part of the Harbor Day Foundation and the Tree City USA, which we got our pack today. We were awarded the Tree City for, I think this is our fourth or fifth consecutive years. We've done this before. We've done it. Yeah, yeah. So we've done it every year. Who we'll 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 approved the Harbor Day resolution? Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, say about that. Aye. Uh, uh, Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is the uh, change, uh, possible changes for Chapter 19.4 of the police policy. I think y'all probably had a copy in your packet there, uh, <coughs> Fire 19.4. Uh, it's dealing with the uh, take home fleet policy. If you look at the bottom of uh, where it says marked vehicles on the very first page, uh, it says the city maintains one unmarked vehicle. I'd like for that to be changed to two. Okay. We have uh, two now, don't we? We do have two. We have two, so we need to change that to two. Uh, or spend six fifty seven hundred dollars getting it straight. Uh, and then the other change, if you look at the last page, uh, where it says uh, out of county resident, uh, we do know that there is a twenty mile limit on our take home fleet that we can drive. Uh, and I'd like to have uh, the third and fourth bullet. Uh, taken out. If you read it, it talks about officer outside. Ohio County may, may not drive. It doesn't say shall not. It says may not drive his or her assigned vehicle to the resident except for the uh, police chief and lieutenant. And the reason <coughs> why that was because of being uh, subject to have to come into work at any time. Uh, but I would like uh, to have the commission to approve uh, change it from one to two and taking those two bullets out of that last uh, page there that I spoke about. We still have the 20 mile range is still mm -hmm. in effect, right? One thing it says, an officer living outside of High County may not drive his or her son vehicle to their residence. That says may, does that mean that they may? If it says they may not, does that also mean they possibly could? Yeah. I, know, I know there's a big thing between may and shall. Shell's mandatory. Right. May is the actual discretion. Certainly, it's anyway. So, certain circumstances, you 
document. That's why I was asking. I think to me, Mike already has the discretion to. Do that just would that be right? I mean, would he have the discretion to do that? With the word shall? No, with the word may. The word may. With the word may, he would, he would have the discretion. What do you want to change it to? No, he just well, wants to drop it. To, it has to now. He just wants to take it out. He wants the whole provision. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but as it says may instead of shall. Yeah, so we're, what we're thinking is it doesn't even have to be removed. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not looking at the policy. There's so already one. The, uh, I want to get here. Take my glasses. Is I just told him I'm going to set off my glasses when I came in. Oh, way to go. Um, <laughs> you, you want to see? Oh, there you go. I think you're going to take that out. This is the one that says Matt right here. Both of them do. It's true. Or add in at the chief's discretion. Or it says exception, the chief of police routine it and at the discretion. I, I have no necessarily no problem taking it down. I'm just trying to watch somewhere down the road what may arise that that would be nice to have that in there. Well, yeah. the discretion plan needs to be at y'all's discretion, kind of. Well, maybe get some heat off of Mike in case there's a different situation. How we want to do that, yeah. And um, yeah, yeah I, I, I guess you could be more definitive with regard to in those circumstances where it is allowed, who has the discretion to allow it. Um, uh, I'm assuming now, Chief of Police, to the extent discretion is, is warranted, it's up to the Chief of Police. Is that the way it's working? Well, we've never Those done never, it. Never this is something new on this. We've never tried it. Never done anybody, anybody outside of the county. Except for the chief of police. Right. Well, my confusion is, are, are you wanting language in there that prohibits it? No. 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 We're, we're kind of hands but we're having trouble finding police officers. Okay. We find some that may not live within the county. We don't want to do anything to we found some serious but I don't want to leave it wide open. The 20 miles still stays on there. Yeah. Well, that's it. 20 miles. If, if you take it out, basically what you're saying is that it, it would be acceptable to hire somebody outside of the 20 mile radius. And it, would, would, it wouldn't require discretion at that point. If you want the chief of police in certain circumstances to have discretion, I uh, might leave it the way it is or just clean the language up a little bit so it's understandable who has the discretion. But but if if what the idea is from time to time we may need to hire somebody full time or part time outside of the 20 mile radius, then take it out. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Right back. Our big thing's outside of the camp. That the county that's the off thing right now. Yeah. That's a 20 mile radius just for the county. See, it says here that number two that we're allowed to be a chief of police lieutenant outside of the county. But if we make it where it's made where he's got the discretion to do it, then will that matter? And again, it may be our discretion, like Larry said, it could be. But that would keep some heat off of the police yeah. department if anything ever come up. If, if what you're wanting to do is have a situation where you can hire somebody at a greater radius than 20 miles and, if appropriate, outside of Illinois County, uh, then I think we just need to clean the lanes. Well, I don't think we want to get away from the 20 mile radius. No, we just want probably to, not. Yeah, we can still hire somebody now 20, out of 20 mile radius. They're just not eligible just not for a car. car. Right, good point. That the is car good. is a, the is a issue. Yeah, we're just it's to not that the car not wanting to hire somebody out of the twenty mile radius. Well, if I I understood you to say time to time you want may want to hire somebody out of county other than is that right? Right. But they would still but be still be within twenty miles. Mile 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 mile. We would leave, probably leave that in just because before you know you'd be driving forty or fifty miles and that adds up on gas and everything else. No, no, I, I'm actually what I intended to say was twenty miles, uh, in, including. For example, if the 20 miles extends outside the county, that's still acceptable, um, uh, assuming 
assuming it's approved by the chief of police or whoever you, you deem necessary to, to, I guess that cleans it up. Because that's, you could have somebody that's no more than 20 miles away that but lives out of county. Mm -hmm. And that's that's pretty easy to do, actually. And would you strike? Then would you take some of this out, three? or just re re reword it, or just leave it like it is? Well, are you going to allow the officer to drive their vehicle to the residence? Yeah, that's the no. But again, wouldn't that be under this May? Could we have the discretion to do that, or should we put it in there? That the commission has well, that, that, that's I'm not sure that's discretionary. It says that uh, an officer of the outside of Ohio County may not drive his or her assigned vehicle to the residence. Um, the only thing you really uh, have to put in there would be, I think, uh, without the uh, approval of and whoever you designate to get approval. If the chief of police has got, got the authority to approve driving the vehicle of the 20 miles, or slightly less, but out of the county, if that's all right with the council, you just say without the approval of. In other words, you, you've said no unless there's, a, there's approval by, in this case, the chief of police or the mayor, whoever he does it. It's pretty easy to clean up. Uh, if you want the somebody on occasion to have the authority to, to drive the vehicle 20 miles, even if it extends out of the county, but limited to only those situations in which it's acknowledged and approved. And it would seem to me in those situations, because of potential liability issues, the council probably needs to know about it as well, and perhaps, uh, and perhaps approve it, uh, because uh, that clears everything. Okay. And then remember we have to change that on the front page too. Do we still need to amend that right there? Take that and make that a two right there. Make that a two instead of one. Can we prove that and, and then second it where you get the finished product to us? I would approve the first reading of the uh, amendment to the final language of the city attorney. Well, that's not actually a first reading. It's not ordered. It does. I thought that we adopted over ordinance, didn't we? This is in their policy. This is did, we adopt the yes. did we adopt the manual by ordinance, though? The employee manual. I don't think it was. The only employee department. manual only? Yeah, this is the okay. department of police department. I thought they were all manual by ordinance. So we don't have to even vote on it? Yeah. So we don't need a vote. I think I need to vote. All right, second. Yeah. We did. You did make the motion. Yeah. Second. Can I motion to second for the discussion? Okay. Uh, yeah. motion passes. Next item is the KLC safety grant application. Mm -hmm. Um, we were applying for a gas monitor. The amount is thirteen hundred seventy dollars. Is the gas monitor with the calibration kit? Is that correct? Yes. And this is 50-50 for KLC. Will they be half of the 1370? Right. Or it's is that the amount that we matched? 1370. Did you say 1370? Is the half of the full? No, that's the full amount. So we'll get 50% of that back. Second. I have a motion to send a further discussion. That's okay. Is the person about that? Several upgrades. Uh, 
uh, I think we're trying to get everybody on the same page and see what the city is going to be responsible for. Maybe what the new business is going to be responsible for. Come to an agreement on on uh, reading as well. Uh, you know that the electrical service has should be upgraded. Uh, the HVAC, there, there's no HVAC in the auxiliary at all. Uh, bathroom will have to be uh, installed. It was a low occupancy. Do you know what your low occupancy will be on it? Talk to Kevin Mike, he's, he's thinking it's going to be a men and women since, you know, potentially going to have over 15 or 20 people at one time. Uh, kind of hard to get a price nail down on him as well. I think she's going to move fairly quick on it. So, what is the city willing to do? Uh, and what are we expecting the to do? Has everyone seen it inside? I don't know what's happened to inside. Without a cost estimate, what's going to cost to fix it up? I don't know. Well, the, bath, the bathrooms, you know, we're looking at 10 to 12,000. Uh, Peace or total? Total. Uh, electrical service, uh, electrical service, I'm looking for 4,000. Uh, HVAC, yeah. we have actually some units that are running, and I think the end has got a price, a couple of three prices on the installation. Uh, I think the cheapest is around 6,500. So we're talking about splitting another 25,000, so there, there's, there's, there's a couple doors that need to be replaced. Is it going to be an office type? I'm trying to bounce. Uh, so, you know. So it's a large. Correct. It's, it's going to be an open, open floor plan. Okay. What do you want to talk about? I mean, I don't care to answer any questions. Or the plan is um, to put the bounce houses in the front. Um, and in the back, there's two rooms. Um, one would be for like parties, um, and the other is um, like an office slash bathroom prep space. Is the ceiling high enough for that view? It is. Um, now we couldn't have our 24 foot ones in there, but yeah. we could safely have. Um, we've got at least four that will easily fit in there. Um, is what we're looking to to do. I don't even know what to. That too. What uh, what up? was what was what were you figuring on the rent being? Maybe Do you have any idea what? No. I mean, we're open for discussion. Um, we're also open to invest some into that. Um, so this is kind of a beginning point. Some of this got started with another party that was interested in looking at another building, and they were wanting to do a lot of sweat equity into it. And then when Deanna started talking a little bit, I kind of put her to Larry. I said, I really don't want to, they don't need to get in the middle of this one. You know, they can yeah. work everything out and you all can decide. But that's how it came to doing this, the city doing as little bit of work as possible. And we've been looking for a place for a little while, and this just kind of came about. Um, we'd like to invest in Beaver Dam. We'd like for it to be in the city limits of Beaver Dam. Um, and I think downtown would be a perfect place, and this is a good location for it, um, especially height-wise. And there's enough space mm -hmm. to accommodate what we need. How many square feet is it that you're looking at? Ish. What did we we measured it? Forty by eighty-ish. In the big room. And then. I think I think that's the total. Measure. Is that the total? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> So we basically need to come with up with a as is rent and a with improvements rent, whichever route we're gonna go. Or a combination of the two. And, yeah, that's what's going I mean I I don't know that we could put as is all the renovations in that we need to to do. Any other two, anything that's done is the permanent with the building. Right. Do you want to rent it or lease it? It might be a difference there too. It's not like we signed a new lease agreement or something. That might 
I don't think we we need to rent anything to anybody without a minimum of a one year lease. That's what I was thinking there for at least a year. And we wouldn't want to do it month to month or I anything wouldn't either. That's what I was thinking. Months, I just no. didn't think it would be something that might prefer two year lease. Yeah. I was thinking three. Well. And that might be too far out because this is a new venture. Yeah. For all of us. And with that, would a, you know, if we did do a three-year lease or a two-year lease or whatever, if we're putting a significant investment in that, that whenever, okay, say it doesn't work, and when we leave, those investments stay, you know, I'd like some type of, do you know what I'm saying? If we're there 12 months and we've put $20,000 into the building and we're not making any money at all, I'd like to be able to get out of that especially if we're going to leave that $20,000 investment with, with the city. Does that make sense? Some type of opt-out yeah. clause. I'm not saying that's going to be the case. We don't want that to be the case. We want to make money. But. And we just need to get estimates. Is that the best way to look at it? And then see what it's going to cost everybody? Well, you know, I've, I've got some, some rough estimates. Of course, you know, that, that could... They can be plus or minus, you know, 10, 15 percent is what they, but the biggie is going to be the bathrooms. Yeah. Uh, and do they have, would that be handicap accessible? Yeah, 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 yeah that's what I thought. Is there sewer lines already where you can go and stuff like that? Well, that's, there's, you know, there's some unknown there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're well, that's the concrete well, floor. And I have to we know there's there. sewer lines because there's bathrooms. There, there's an old restroom there. It just won't meet any, any code. Do you guys have a number in mind that you feel that you could invest? I do. Let me ask you this. What if we put one or two of y'all with Larry in the end? To, dis to discuss, this is really not something you need to discuss in an open meeting because you're talking right. about financial right. information and <laughs> yeah. a lot of proprietary yeah. stuff. But yeah. if one or two of you was interested in giving Larry and Deanna to, to discuss and see what kind of deal you can hammer it out, or if you just want Larry and Deanna to do it. You know, they're, they're wanting to move fairly quick on this, so. Uh, well, we can have called me, that's at least a month. Is that good? Kevin, are you interested? I, I'm glad to have, if you need me to, I don't have a problem with it. I just like, I like a little more information, I think, than, than what just yeah. guessing. I don't want to guess, and plus I know we're kind of strapped in because we're, you know, we did buy the buildings, we're remodeling over here, we're doing here, this and this and this, and I don't want to, I don't want to go overboard on it, but I also don't want them to be out in yeah. money either. I'll, <laughs> yeah, okay. Is that okay with you, Deanna, that we get together? Absolutely. Just, yeah, Absolutely. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Like this week? Sure. Let me know when I can. I can any time of the Thursday. Kevin, it's only when you all work that out. Tomorrow, 2 30. We're used to that work. Yeah, until 4. What time do you get off? 4 30. I'm sure you're going to work for all that time. So, 5. So, 5 would be the burden you begin here. I mean, I could send Lane, but. <laughs> <laughs> don't take this wrong, but he's too nice. You don't need to send him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we sort of wow. talk the same lingo. <laughs> that, that, you know, just <laughs> call it like it is. Yeah, Lay it out there on the table, just like it is. Lane is, he would him haul around and be really nice. That's a compliment. <laughs> Y'all work that out my heart or something. Thank you. Chris? Yeah. We'd let you know we do have uh, an officer that is ready to come. Uh, probably first of April. Uh, April 8th, something like that. I spoke with him today, make 100% sure that he's still on board. He was. I spoke with Chris. Uh, talked to Tommy and them about it. Uh, you know, before I got back with that that guy, and it's Paul Burton is who it is. Some of you probably know him. He he went to school down here. Uh, you remember him, Charles? The name is still familiar. Uh, uh, he who's married, his wife? Y'all kept telling me who his wife. Married Star. 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 Oh, okay. Star. Milton. Milton. Uh, yeah. What was her name? Yeah. Milton. Milton. Yeah. Yeah. But he's uh, got about 16, 17, 16, 17 years experience. Uh, 
Morgantown right now, and he's ready to make a move. Well, like and I do think he'd be a good good addition for. Well, and and that's kind of where some of this came up with. The, we yeah. use the car as a as a park, obviously, as to get. And, and, and we like to have in this day and time, especially after what's just happened. If a police officer gets caught, they can just spend time wasting a few minutes coming back here to get a car. And this, uh, and it might work out a good way, the way we have decided to do it, because in this instance, he only lives seven miles from the city limits, but it's four miles over in Butler County. On 230. He's closer than you are. Yeah. He's closer than I So we just want to. Thank you. We've been trying to find one since what October. Yeah, I think when we started, and we just they just haven't been out there to get one. And we don't want to have to go back to the academy. Right. I mean, not that I. Well, no, I'm trying to not that. Thing, what is the cost of sending my, somebody to the academy? What would the cost be? That's uh, we pay them twelve dollars and a half an hour, don't we, Larry? While they're going over to the academy, like nine month period. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. it's basically a year till we get anything. Yeah. The school boards are paid for through the incentive program. You're just out the hourly wage that you pay. And well, we still have to pay for the academy classes. The classes is paid for through the CLED fund on the first round. Now, if they don't make it the first round, yeah. then you have to pay for the second round. Which what is about the accommodations? That's through the that's, dorm that's everything. Through. We have to pay the wages, basically. For pay the wages and, 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 and the fuel. And with partial car up there. Right. And if you hire one, it could take five or six months to get them into the academy. Oh, yeah. And then you've got 23 weeks to go through it. Yeah. So, so we're really trying to... Like you're, talking about right. a, you're talking about a year yeah. before you'll get anything out of... Out of uh, so I go into the academy. So we're really yeah, I think it's looking for the ones that are already certified, and this is some of the things we have to do. So. And we can we can have wait have special call meeting for his hiring. I was going to say, do you want to do that tonight? Uh, or are you not? I mean, I, I mean, I'm comfortable with it. I, I spoke with Charles. Charles. Do what? Charles what date would be available? The eighth of April. If you're I, we spoke with him. Uh, I think. Y'all are aware of who he is. Yeah. Uh, I really think he'll fit. I think he'll fit well in with us. He, I mean, he's a top-notch officer. He's always very professional looking. He wants his uniform looking great. He keeps every time I've ever seen his cruiser that he drives Morgantown. It's always spotless. Uh, and I think he's be one that's going to stay and probably finish his career here. And that would be good. But, uh, I mean, I'm comfortable with it. it, it uh, and we'd ask you all to go ahead and, and do that if, if you all are comfortable with it tonight. If not, we can wait till the end of the month. We know what that pay would be. Uh, He's got 16 years of experience, uh, and we had talked about it a little bit, and uh, I thought 16 and go to 16.50 after his 30 days, and that'll be that'll still be 10 cents under what Cody is making. Is that what we similar to what we did with the last officer? Uh, yeah, Dalton's thinking. Yeah. Now, would it, is he going to be eligible for a race come July one? Uh, he'll just well in April. Uh, if he did, Larry, it would be very, it, it would be amenable, Ray. Because, you know, we're, we're fixing to hire one for the sanitation, and that's going to be one of my stipulations. If he doesn't get a raise. he doesn't get a raise July 1. And I, you know, well, I, well, you said the, the 50 cents after how many days? After his 90 days, pro bacon period. That's going to be after July 1. Yeah, that's after yeah. July 1. See, he well, won't I mean, we, the officer needs to know coming in. Yeah. Well, they're, they're not let me recommend this, and, yeah. and then y'all. Starting about 16, after he's 90 days up, go to 16, 60, and then he won't get another raise till the following year. And that would put him where he was with, with the other ones, right? Now, I think it goes against the policy, the policy is that says after 90 cents. days is 50 cents. Yeah. So, you know, we're already jumping around. That's the first time. Well, it's starting about 16, 10, and <coughs> give him a piece of temp raise. It. And of course, he won't be able for the for the card after his ninety days anyway, no, and no, he knows that. No. Policy will change over. Oh, did since it? Since he's already certified. Okay, yeah, he's certified. Uh, Sixteen and 
sixteen fifty will be fine. I just I just want the officer to know what he's getting yeah. and there's no miscommunication no matter what the pay is. Right. We want to get started off. And, and we and, and we had we had talked about that. Sixteen after nine days go sixteen fifty. And and he'll be at that sixteen fifty for, for the for the year. To the next because that ninety days like I said we put him into July. Yeah. I just want the officer coming in. Thinking sure. something different. Yeah. And, like and, that. and that's what we we talked about 16, 16, 50. Yeah. Did you make that motion? Did you make that motion? Second. Is there a motion and a second? Any further discussion? Is it favor signify the time? Uh, uh, those opposed, same. Motion passes. Anything else, Mike? No, everything's going good. Uh, Cody got married over the weekend. So. <laughs> uh, Roger, he's doing well. Yeah, right. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> and I saw that you officiated the ceremony. Yeah. Uh, nice. But no, police department's going well. We're just uh, patiently waiting for our new police station. Everything's peaceful right now, other than the wipes. So. <laughs> <laughs> the wipes or the wipes? What would you say? I wasn't wipes. sure if you said wipes or wipes. When I first wipe. read that disposable wipes, I was thinking, who's wanting to carry disposable wipes and why did they need us to discuss it? <laughs> Sandy, you No, I don't. Charles and Rob sleep hard and far good, aren't you? I don't know. Okay. Good. Maybe. I've got just one thing, and I'll turn let Larry do it because I know we do need to close short post session. Uh, just a building update. Um, I think you're right. Uh, have you had a chance to do that? No. Well, we'll go ahead and just, just pass it. We'll go with, with show it off. Uh, if it's cold in there, I don't know if I went to it. It's cold. I saw a bit more. I think it was cold in there. I saw a bit more. Not as bad as outside. Uh, of course, it's behind schedule. Uh, we the, the initial contract was to have substantial completion well completion of that part with the uh, temporary certificate of occupancy by March 15th and that's Thursday and I don't think we're going to quite make it so uh, I sent an email just kind of asking to give me an update on what kind of time frame we're looking at to try to get things back on schedule because uh, that's supposed to be completed by March 15th and then once all that completed and they can't start over here until that gets completed to move everything that we've got to move over there and then the whole project has to be done by June 15th. So I'm, I'm a little concerned. In here too? Huh? In here too? Right. By June 15th? Okay. Ooh. I know when we set this up, we talked to the architect and we talked to all the contractors at the pre bid meeting, and that all agree had too. an issue with that. They think that'd be a problem. But it's. I'm afraid it will. I'm afraid it may be. <laughs> we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, but it was. It's looking good. I'm, I'm pleased with what we've got. From the outside, it certainly does. How's it looking? So we'll just keep working on it. Uh, we do have everything kind of worked out. We've got arrangements made with the police. And we're going to temporarily house them during construction in here. And I think planning and zoning, I guess, are they still going out here in the back hallway? Yeah. They're just putting me out. <laughs> I just hope they put me a new one in. I'm not going to get down. Okay, Larry, you got anything? Other than the post session stuff? Uh, my summer help or part times, whatever, whatever it is it is. Seasonal. Seasonal. Intermittent. Okay. Oh, that's what Amy said. Seasonal. Was. Seasonal. I've been trying to get some clarification. Is, is that something I have to bring back to the commission every year if we bring them back because it's so here in the next couple of three weeks, you know, it'll be ready. And, uh, well, I thought we looked on that right you your description. Well, yeah, that's what I remember. So they'll they'll be coming back here here fairly shortly, and uh, uh, I asked that we send Garrett Fairs to his first water class. Uh, I think it's June the fourth. Uh, he'll be going with uh, John Grant. I think he had already approved his training. Uh, it'll be class class two BD groundwater treatment. Do we have to make that a motion? I'll make a motion. We'll do that. Second. I'll second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Does it ever seem by that? Uh, oh, same. And one thing for AV, when we meet on the contract with the uh, insurance, we also probably need to go back and look at the Waukegan Water District 
contract as well. So I forgot all about that. You need to get that detector. Can I entertain a motion in the closed session? Closed session, please. Okay. Aye. 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 Aye.